His company is delightful. He's, a t he's just t like totally delightful to be with. He's always trying to engage people in the kind of conversation going on inside his head. And there's something so innately intelligent but also sweet about him. Whenever he's around, I smile. I know something interesting is going to come out of his mouth. Traditional journalists tend to gravitate, like I do, to traditional paths and traditional subjects. Malcolm would sooner dive in a cold ocean. He's engaged with sociology, popular psychology, a lot of ideas coming out of the social sciences, which before he started writing didn't have that much connectivity into mainstream culture and mainstream journalism. What was distinctive about his stuff right from the beginning is that he was always writing about ideas and he gave ideas the qualities of actions. It, it, it read like drama and it's so hard to do that. There are very few writers, there are very few writers in history who've done that, who, who have written very sophisticated intellectual pieces that a mass audience treats as, as page turners. You should know this about Malcolm, he is disgustingly fit. He doesn't have an ounce of fat on his body, he's wiry. He's kind of wired. He has a ton of energy. He and Jacob's pal, Jacob Weisberg, run like gazelles through Central Park. It's absolutely revolting. I can generally keep up with him for about half the run. Uh, the problem is that as much as I train and get faster, he makes a point of staying that much ahead of me. So even if you improve, you never catch Malcolm. My favorite piece of his is about a pitch man named Ron Popeil, who sold on television the Ronco Jar and Bottle Cutter, which sounds like an idiotic idea for a long New Yorker profile, but what it was about was selling. And Malcolm's really sympathetic portrayal of this, this guy. And Malcolm tends to write about people he admires at some level or another, even though he's not blind to people's, you know, bullshit. You're hearing about people who have applied ideas effectively in their own lives and that you might be able to do the same thing. So there's almost a kind of highbrow self-help element to, it, to his writing. He's one of those people who prods me to do better because he's so good. He can persuade you that the grass is purple. And, you'll, and at the end of the piece, you'll put it down and you say, yeah, grass is purple. I, I can't believe I never, I never knew that. Then two days later, you'll wake up and you'll say, well, actually, grass is green. And you'll be a little irritated. It's a great, it's a great tribute to him. Maybe the highest tribute is he can persuade the whole world that something that's not true is true. He is run into, and he's now quite used to, this crazy success. And I don't see that it has affected him in any uh, ill way, not one inch. Um, maybe it's the Canadian in him, I don't know. I don't know, but he's, he's a guy of real character. I, I admire him, I adore him.